we look at the setup here now, okay, as much as you may feel quite contorted there with your spine angle, okay, yeah. you're only a little bit tilted there in terms of address compared to where you were kind of there and there. Yeah. So it's not as if you're massively changed, but you'll yeah. see more impact with spine angle being a lot more different, okay? So when your shoulders are leveled off there, what's going to happen as you start coming to the golf ball now, you're coming down a bit steep, your shoulders are still level here now. As you hit the golf ball, your arms actually tuck into your body and pull in here. Right, yeah? Yeah. So if they extended through with that club, you hit the ground behind the ball so far that you just duff it, yeah. or you catch hit the golf club. So this, this impact sort of habit we just saw, release habit, this pulling in with the arms, if you stay back on it, you should do, that's the one you get there, you toe end it because your arms pulling in here. You look at the, how close sorry, you look how close your hands are to your chest there after impact. Yeah, yeah. Compare that to this minute. Look at your spine angle impact there. That's a nice spine angle there. Okay, nice sort of behind the ball compared again to that one there where you're kind of more on top of the golf ball. Yeah, this one's a much more sort of behind the ball releasing through. And again, if we look at your arms through here, that was all tucked up. Yeah. Look at your arms through there. There's daylight there, isn't it? I mean, yeah, the difference in your hands yeah. there. So that was sort of swinging through a bit more kind of this way, that kind of yeah. whip cracking sensation, or this sort of towel flip with the arms, okay? Yeah. And hitting that bag with a bit more speed, which is why this is the one that went 193, I think it was, yeah. where you come through. Now, the follow through is a bit short, you haven't quite released through as much as you could do this when you sort of turn through to a full swing. Yeah. So all that energy and effort didn't actually give you more yardage. Yeah. Now, yes, ideally speaking, obviously, too, I want you to be more in that finish position. Yeah, yeah. But you can see how much your shoulder kind of comes through that sort of side, so much trying to really throw the body at it, rather than let that sort of shoulder stay back and let the club head speed up, and then you sort of complete the swing and you sort of just, just come on the corner. Don't resist and stop it for too long. No. It will eventually want to see this that foot there upon its toe like that, which yeah. you, just, you go back to there, okay? But the setup address position is the key, only with the driver really, being a bit more tilted behind the golf ball, and feel that you're in the golf ball kind of more underneath and from this way as you swing through. It's not kind of here and levelling the shoulders off and basically swinging left and pulling your arms in, yeah? So if I swing my arms this way, so you can come and extend my arms, boink, the club hits the ground behind the ball, then you duff it, which is a shot you may often hit on the golf course anyway, okay? The problem is that if you get that contact, you probably wouldn't change your shoulder and spine angle, I wouldn't have thought. You'll just think, okay, I've hit the ground behind the golf ball, I know, I'll pull my arms and I'll miss the ground, yeah? And then you might get a reasonable strike, but quite low, and then your body might start doing this, and you start towing them, and then that's when that inconsistency comes in, yeah? We want to get your spot. So you just, a good, simple way to do this now, with this I'll show you on here, is set up with a club kind of on your sternum through your chest, there, sort of push it down quite tight, lean forward to your golf posture, and from there just tilt to the club rest against your left thigh there, yeah? That's, that's how much your spine is. You're not sort of going a massive amount here. I'm not yeah. doing this kind of leaning this way, okay? Just taking my hips and just tilting like so. So if I sort of draw a line on here, you'll see an address. Oops, it's a circle, not a line, sorry. If I go down through the middle part of your chest and continue on, if there's a golf club down through your spine, it's just touching against your left knee there, yeah? You see? Yeah. So yeah. that's the amount of spine angle lean we want to try and get. Just to get us in a position to hit a golf ball that's up in the air, yeah? Every other shot we hit in seven irons, hybrids, other clubs, the ball's on the ground, you want to be coming down more with that club anyway. So that's going to be a good thing with that thing. With the drive of the ball being teed up, just seeing a bit more behind the ball, swinging a bit more kind of underneath sensation, allowing that club to catch up and square the club up. But I think the biggest issue is that you've suffered a little bit, should we say, with a bit of a slicing one off to the right there, and done whatever you can to try to send the ball somewhere left which usually is a sort of combination of right shoulder, throwing the right arm, pulling the arms in this way, aiming left turn, or whatever it may be, yeah? If we can eliminate the reason why it goes right, at least then you can say, okay, right, I want the ball to go to that yellow flag. Okay, I'll now swing it towards that yellow flag. I say, if I say, hit a tennis ball with a tennis racket, you sort of throw that and you go, okay, I'll whack it towards the flag. You wouldn't go, oh, I don't want to go to the left and, yeah. and slice across it. But we've got a drive in our hand, because of history we've seen a ball doing something, we end up playing fighting with that golf club, yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Good, okay, mate. Have a couple of swings in with that driver to get that spine angle lean a bit more, okay, buddy?